So when we talk about 2D player controllers in 2D, we have two main types, okay? So the first type is basically a platformer character movement, okay? And basically uh, the following one, the second, is top-down movement. So here we have real examples of this one. So for example, platform movement is the type of, uh, of, ca of character controller that you have in games such as Mario Bros. Whereas top-down is, for example, what you have in Stardew Valley. So in this video, we're going to see how to implement both of them inside of the Godot engine. So here I have a brand new project, okay? And I will just create a new to the scene. I will call it main. Since here is gonna be like our playground, okay? We are, we are going to be creating these two things. And also before digging into that, I want to briefly explain the main differences between them. So once again, remember in Mario Bros, what you have is basically this character that can move up uh, and down and left and right. But in reality, for moving down and right, what we have are forces and not input directly. So whenever you move up in Mario Bros, for example, what happens is that there is a force that is applied okay and when you are moving down there is also a force of course this down force is gravity and this up force is let's say an impulse or whatever it is whereas left and right movements they are based on input okay now if we talk about top down everything is controlled by input so right sorry right left down and up everything is basically related to input uh, so basically what we can say is that in a platformer a character what we have is gravity and we can also jump okay but in a top down we don't have gravity and we don't have a jumping and here you have well some drawings that i've done here just for you to see it better but it's basically the exact same thing so how do we create this to encode it so for, first of all what you have to know is that in order to create the platformer one it's very easy since godot already has a template for us ready to use so let me first of all start adding a new node here to my main scene i will be adding it using the shortcut of adding a child node control a and for this type of controller okay you would be able to do it with a uh, mostly any kind of node uh i mean basically you could do it with a rigid body an area 2d a character body but the best one is gonna be a character body 2d not only because it is a 2D physics body specialized for characters moved by a script, exactly what we want, something that we can move via script, but also because of this. Once we add it, okay, we can rename it. So let's call this one platformer player. And let's add a script. And when we add a script, as you can see, we have a new template here, which is character body 2D basic movement. Okay. So this is already a template that has a lot of logic for us to be able to move. Now let's create here new scripts folder just to save it. And what you have to understand here is that as you, as you um, saw, the, the template is not called platformer movement or anything like that. It's called basic movement. So this is why you may be seem confused when you wanted to add this template and you saw that, well, it wasn't maybe the type of movement that you wanted. Okay, and the good thing is, it's basically like that, like this is gonna be working. But of course we need some basic stuff, uh, such as a collision shape, okay? And a sprite. So let's super uh, rapidly set them up. So for the sprite, it's gonna be something like this, and the collision is gonna be maybe something like this. Okay, it's gonna be more than enough. Uh, and this is gonna be kind of working. So I can play the game and with left and right arrows, as you can see, I was able to move, but we should also add some kind of ground. So to add a ground, a static body, a sprite, and a collision. Let me set them up in a second. So here I have my ground. Let me just move it down using the move tool over there. So now we do have a ground that we can walk on top of. So here we can see everything that we have mentioned. So first of all, we can only directly control the input left and right. Okay, but up, well, we also control up with input, but when we go up, we also have gravity. Okay. Uh, so we're not going to dig deeper into how exactly this code works because I think it's pretty easy to understand here with all the comments and all that. So what I, what I will actually do just to keep everything nice and organized, I will parent these two nodes to a new node, a node 2D. I'm going to call this one platformer player or character, something like that, so that we can hide them. And now we can go on to create the, um, the top-down character. So... What I will do, just to keep everything organized, a new node 2D, so top down character, 
And for this one, we would be able to use both character body and area 2D, okay? Um, so, once again, I want to, to dig deeper into why you should use one or the other. But what I will tell you is that whenever you want to create a player that you want to move via input or basically anything that you want to move it via a script uh, and it has to be and it's going to be a character for example a player or an enemy in those cases a character body is the best choice it has the best support it's pretty easy to set up and has some more let's say technical advantages so let me also set this up and here when we want to attach a new script to our top-down player once again what we want to have in this template and the good thing is that we now understand what this basic movement means. In reality, it, it is also said over here, classic movement for gravity games, like a platformer, okay? But once again, if you don't read this description, you don't understand what actually Godot means by saying basic movement. So in this case, we don't want a platformer type of controller, which is the one that we've created just a second ago. So we will just start with a brand new script. So let me just save it in the corresponding scripts folder. And there we go. The good thing is that if you look in Google something like this, okay? Uh, you're going to be finding this page to the movement overview from the official Goda documentation. So if you go over here, you're going to find like a lot of information about this and you're going to have in, uh, a ready to copy and paste example of an eight weight movement. Okay, this is exactly what we want. So we can directly go ahead, copy this. Okay, and paste it right over here. We can delete this line. And here we go. So it's even simpler okay because we don't have gravity we don't have jumping it's just moving according to the input so what we have to take into account here is that here is using these input actions left right up and down but these input actions do not exist right now what do exist is ui left and ui right these are created by default by the engine so let's just use here ui left and ui right and lastly ui up Oh, sorry, we have one more UI down. Okay. So now when we run the scene, what you're going to see is that, oh, sorry, I believe that I have not loaded in a sprite. Oh, yes, I have. All right, here we have it. I don't know why that happened, but here it is. And well, we do have this other type of uh, controller. Okay. Uh, I will just in literally 30 seconds explain super quickly how this works. So, in this case, we're using, uh, this is the top-down um, player controller. So we have an exported variable, speed, so we can set it in this vector if we want. We have a function here that we have created ourselves, get input. This input direction, what it basically gets us to know is exactly that, the input direction. The best way to understand this is to just print the value. So if you print input direction, you will actually understand what is going on. So just take a look at the console and press the different keys and you will understand what is going on. So it's basically calculating the direction that the player should follow based on what we are pressing. And then it's basically applying this direction, okay, to the character body to the velocity. This is a built-in value inside of the character body to the class, as you can see. And then this direction, as it is, as you can see, values that only go from zero to one maximum, we multiply that at speed so that it's a little bit faster. We execute this function of physics process and we call move and slide to actually update the position. If we don't call move and slide and I press whatever it is, the player is not gonna move. Okay, as simple as that. Then this one could be a little bit more complicated, but fortunately it has some comments. So in this case, we have two constants. Okay, once again, constants and variables are the exact same thing in terms that they both store values. The difference is that constant values cannot be changed because they are constant and variable values, they can be changed because they are variable, they can change. So once again, here we use the physics process. Why physics process and not process? Because here, remember that this is a body that has physics integrated. So we have to use physics process. So to add the gravity, we basically do this. If we are not in the floor, we are applying the gravity. In order to handle the jump, if we are pressing the UI accept, which is the spacebar or the enter, and we are also on the floor to prevent jumping if we are in the sky. If all that is true, we apply the jump, okay? The impulse that we were talking about. And just here, direction is something super similar to what we used to have here, input direction, but input direction is actually a vector, so it has two values, X and Y, but a direction just has one value. So if we print here direction, and let's actually hide this one and show this one, you will see what I mean. As long as it's just zero or one if I move right or a minus one if I move left. So it's the same thing, but it just has one axis. 
and if direction, this means that if direction is different from zero, it actually applies the corresponding direction and speed. Once again, this is the same thing as we have over here. So you can see a certain direction times a certain speed, same thing. And if um, and if not direction, this would mean that direction is zero. What is basically applying here is a, is a deacceleration, basically. So it's moving our velocity x towards zero at the speed okay so this basically should create some kind of deacceleration when we stop pressing a key you may be able to realize it but it's super subtle um so that's basically all now if you liked how i explained uh, all this tutorial what you can do is go to the description of this video and you're going to be finding all my game development courses so if you click in any of these links you're going to be redirected to these landing pages so the cool thing is that all these links Sometimes they have some exclusive discounts. So as you can see here, you're going to be able to get my courses at something like 71% off. So it's a lot of money that you're going to be saving. So as you can see, I have three courses on Godot. So you can check all them three out. And also have a full Unity course of more than 20 hours. Uh, so that's basically all. Check them out in the description in this video. And I will see you there.